to introduce the performance of fourth quarter and the financial year of 2013. If you have any technical problems, please don't hesitate to let us know by writing them on the chat box in the right corner. Today's webinar is hosted by the Chairman of the Management Board, Ian Blendelief, and Chief Financial Officer, Rina Gai, and Chief Operating Officer, Alexander Dimofeev. Rina Gai and Ian Blendelief will introduce the company's financial results, and Mr. Dimofeev will answer any questions regarding operational performance after the presentation. Pre-sent questions will be answered straight after the presentation, and you will then have the opportunity to ask further questions. Microphone rights are disabled during the presentation. Microphone rights are enabled to all participants after the presentation. The questions will be answered on the principle of first come, first served. We will explain how to activate your microphone after the presentation. In case of technical issues with the microphone settings, please write to your questions to chat window. We will read the questions on your behalf. I will now hand it over to Ian Blenderley. Good morning, everybody, and thank you very much for joining us on our 2013 uh, results presentation using the webinar service. If I could first of all start by just discussing briefly the privatisation contract dispute that we currently have with the Competition Authority. In quarter four, we have seen really very, very little progress indeed. None of our court dis uh, discussions have moved forward. However, I, I would just like to take this opportunity to remind you all once again of the key points of the dispute that are contained in the slide in the presentation. The first and perhaps most important point of all is the courts have ruled that the services agreement is a public law contract. And the courts have also ruled that the current tariffs will remain in place until the court disputes has been completed. Although court proceedings have started, and as I mentioned earlier, they are moving very, very slowly, there is no real information to detail to yourselves yet regarding information on progress as the proceedings have been deemed partially closed by the Competition Authority. I'd repeat that, but close proceedings at the request of the Competition Authority, not the company. As you will all know, we do believe in transparent discussions of revenues, profits, of tariffs, of regulatory performance, etc. One of the key claims of the Competition Authority is that the, the privatisation contract was always illegal. However, this is obviously flies in the face of the fact that the Estonian government approved the privatisation contract itself on two occasions in 2000 and 2001. Those of you who have been on the call a number of times will be aware that we have also issued a complaint to the European Union. Our discussions are ongoing, but we certainly know they are supportive of the regulatory economics of our case. We're very proud to say that in spite of this backdrop of the privatisation contract being contested, in spite of the fact that it is claimed has always been illegal, the company has continued to full, fulfil all the operational requirements that are set by the services agreement and the privatisation contract. We believe this demonstrates quite clearly that we are a responsible company who is interested in providing a high quality service to the citizens of Tallinn. And finally, just to remind everybody of the rates of return earned as a result of the privatisation contract, the annual average real rate of return from 2001 to 2013, I believe now actually, is 6.2%. So that's the current overview of the privatisation contract. We just move on now to the second slide. I'll just give a very, very brief overview of the operational highlights for the year. Total sales have decreased in the year by 0.3%. Operating profit from the main business is reduced by 7.4% year on year. I'd just like to say that although this seems like a significant reduction, we would like to highlight that this is not a true reflection of the underlying performance uh, of the business. So uh, half of the impact of this reduction results from events in 2011, where an accrual was carried over from one year to another. And Rina will explain that in more detail later. And in addition to that, the 
and certainly a quarter of that is surrounding additional legal costs associated with the number of court disputes that we have. So although we are down 7.4%, as I say, it's not a true reflection of our underlying business. Rina will describe the movements in profits and revenues in more detail later in the presentation. Moving on to operational performance. We're proud of our operational performance in 2013 is excellent once again. And for example, 2013 water quality at the customer's tap, we had 99.7% compliance. It's the highest level in the company's history. In 2013, both our water and wastewater networks performed excellently, producing close to our best ever performance in terms of leakages and sewer blockages. And finally, we're also very pleased to report that our customer relations rating for 2013 was 78. This compares very, very favourable to the average uh, for European utilities, which is 54. And I think this rating again, once again, demonstrates the work of all of our staff to ensure we place the customer at the centre of our thinking each workday. Again, just to give some confidence in that ranking, this is a survey that is independently carried out by international firm TNS Emor and enables us to benchmark our performance against utilities, not just in Estonia, but across Europe. Thank you for listening. I will be back at the end to take any questions that you have, and I will now hand you over to Rina, who will take you through our financial results in more detail. Rina. Thank you, Ian, and good morning, everybody. Now I would like to give you the overview of the financial performance of Axis Tallinn Avesi in 2013. I start with the financial highlights, and then will give more detailed overview about sales and cost further on. As Ian already mentioned, our sales have been flat compared to 2012, increasing only by €163,000 or 0.3% in 2013. Water and wastewater sales has been quite stable, decreasing €0.2 million Euros or 0.3%. In 2013, we have had a decline in stormwater revenues. At the same time, there has been an increase in our non-regulated business revenues. The biggest increase in the sales of our non-regulated business comes from increased construction and design services sales by 0.8 million euros or 226%. Our gross profit has decreased by 2 million euros, which is 6.2% less than last year. Also, our operating profit from main activities is at the lower level by 2 million euros, which is 7.4%, as already mentioned by Ian. The biggest impact on gross profit and operating profit is highly affected by increased pollution tax, but also by the decrease of stormwater revenues. The biggest part of increased pollution tax is related with an incidence in wastewater treatment plant in April 2013, which we will we'll cover later in the presentation. The profit before tax is behind the last year's results by 2.5 million euros or 9.25%. In addition to the impacts mentioned above, there was a decrease of other income. In 2012, we received income from computation of pipes resulting from the sewage extension program that was finished in 2012, and in 2013, we didn't have grant income. Now going further to our revenues. As mentioned before, the total sales revenues have been flat year on year, being ahead only by 163,000 euros, or 0.3%. Total revenues of water and wastewater services were by €175,000 or 0.4% lower than in 2012, amounting to €47.7 million. Euros. As you are all very well aware, our tariffs are frozen at 2010 level, and therefore the changes in consumption have got the same impact on sales figures. Whilst the consumption in domestic sector has declined by 0.6% to 27.3 million cubic meters compared to the comparative period from last year, there has been an increase in the sales to commercial clients. The increase of 286,000 euros or 1.52% to commercial customers exceeds and fully covers the decline in the sales uh, to private customers, which has declined by 147,000 euros or 0.6%. The sales to outside service areas has mainly been affected by the decrease in the sales of stormwater. Whilst sales revenue from outside areas, uh, water and wastewater services has increased by €113,000 or 3% to €3.8 million, Euros. the sales revenue from stormwater has decreased uh, €329,000 
of 40.5 percent to 418 euros. Storm water revenues also has have um, uh, dropped in the main service area by 576,000 euros or 15.5 percent due to the dry year in 2013 than it was in 2012. If uh, the tariffs that we are entitled by the contract have been applied uh, uh, in our current years, uh, then our current year's revenues from main area would have been 5.5 uh, million higher. <clears throat> the increase in the sales from non-regulated business comes mostly from pipeline construction and design services as mentioned before. They have increased by 795,000 euros or 226 percent to 1.2 million euros. The profit from construction and design services has increased by 125,000 euros or 168.9 percent. This now takes us to the overview of costs. The company's total operating costs for 2013 have increased by 2.14 1 million euros or 9.3 percent compared to the comparative period in 2012. Main impact to cost comes from an increase in cost of goods sold, which are on its own highly influenced by an increase of pollution tax expenses. Firstly, in the first quarter of 2012, there was a release of pollution tax provision, which had one off impact in the amount of 436,000 euros. Secondly, in April 2013 and thereafter, there have been a couple of small incidences in wastewater treatment plant. At the time of the incidents, the short period of time, not all the wastewater could have been treated, and that itself resulted in increase in pollution tax, which additional income tax with additional income tax expense. Due to the incident, the company was liable for higher pollution tax rate, to which extra income tax was added. Therefore, the company faced extra cost of 1.3 million euros. As we managed to get the compensation from the insurance for 150,000 euros, the total increase in pollution tax compared to 2012 amounted to 1.5 million euros, or 439% higher. Other than that, costs are quite in line. The electricity cost decreased by 0.3 million euros, or 8.2%. percent and The increase is mostly volume-driven. Due to the increase of the sales from our non-regulated business, which mostly comes from an increase in construction and design revenues by 795,000 euros or 226 percent, there has been an increase also in respective expenses from 0.3 million euros to 0.9 million euros or 241 percent. Marketing and general administration costs have increased by 0.24 million euros or 4.3 percent. Most of the increase comes from our increased legal costs related to the ongoing direct dispute. Net financial expenses have decreased by 1.5 million euros or 88.5% year on year due to positive movement in fair value of interest rate swap agreements, which impact to the income statement is 2.2 million euros. At the same time, our interest income has come down due to the decrease in, in, in our loans. The impact of uh, interest revenues have been 0.9 million euros. Now moving on to the cost for fourth quarter. The operating costs in the fourth quarter have increased compared to the fourth quarter in 2012 by 0.35 million euros or by 5.25 percent. The direct production costs, electricity, water, abstraction charges, pollution tax and chemicals have decreased in the fourth quarter compared to the same period in 2012 by 0.23 million euros. Lower volumes treated were balanced by increased prices and taxes. The before mentioned decrease was cancelled out by increased costs um, related uh, by the expenses for higher repair and maintenance works by 0.2 million euros. The costs re related to the extra revenues from our non regulated business construction and design works have increased from 91,000 euros to 300. 57,000 euros or 292 percent. In the fourth quarter, the profit from construction design works amounted to 80,000 euros compared to 70,000 euros in the same period in 2012, showing an increase of 10,000 euros or 14.3 percent. 
increase in marketing and administration expenses by 0.19 million euros or 13.88 percent is mainly related to increased consultation and legal services as we are still having a tariff dispute. If we now move on to the cash flows. The cash balance as of 31st of December 2013 stood at 31.8 million euros, forming 15.7% of the total assets. During 12 months of 2013, cash balance has increased by 7.85 million euros. The biggest contributor to the cash flows comes from main operations. 2013 operating cash flows were below 2012 cash flows, mainly due to the lower operating profit. The company's cash flows from investing activities have also been positive for past two years. In the 12 months of 2013, net cash flows from investing activities resulted in a cash inflow of 3.37 million euros, an increase of 1.33 million euros compared to an inflow of 2.05 million euros in the 12 months of 2012. In 2013, Axis Mardovesi paid back its loan to the company in full, which had a positive impact on cash of 3.8 million euros. Due to the decrease in loans, received interest amount has dropped by 0.9 million euros or 56%. In 2013, there was no loans given out. The cash flow used in financing activities is mainly influenced by bigger dividend payment and tax associated. I would like to thank you for your time and attention and all your questions are really welcome now. Okay. Okay, we had two present questions, uh, which I will now read and hand over to turn for answers. Uh, first question, uh, could you please explain shortly what is the investment plan for the next five years? Does it involve takeovers or for other water companies? How do you plan to finance the investments? Uh, first that question will be answered by Ian Blenderley. Thank you, Marilise. If I, could, if I could break the answer to the first question down into two parts. Looking at the investments that the company needs to make to ensure that we continue to deliver a high quality service to the citizens of Tallinn. Firstly, our obligation of course is to ensure that we meet the standards required by the services agreement, we meet the standards required by the law, and we continue, certainly where economic, to improve our performance levels for the benefit of customers. Given the investments that we have made to date uh, across the entire value chain from the lake right through to the disposal of treated effluent, we're very confident that Lars that we can achieve all of those required standards and continuous improvements with our current investments, now the current structure of our assets. Therefore, at the moment, we do not see any need for any significant investments to improve treatment capability or production performance. Moving on to the second part of the question about will we be looking to invest into other municipalities uh, and other water companies across Estonia. That's a very interesting question. It's very topical given some of the information that has been in the media recently. Uh, I'm sure you may have read if you're interested in the sector that there has recently been a report by the State Audit Office which was actually quite critical of the structure of the sector and certainly is quite critical of the sustainability of the sector and also clearly referenced the fact that tariffs might have to increase considerably for the, sector, for the sector to be sustainable. That in itself presents a number of opportunities for a company such as Tallinn of Essie, where we have already invested in technology, systems, processes and people to ensure that uh, EU water and wastewater quality standards have been achieved. It obviously wouldn't be difficult for us to do, to work with the other municipalities and municipal, municipal companies to ensure that improvements in standards could be delivered to their citizens much more efficiently than if they were to remain as standalone companies. So certainly the report, I think, by the State Audit Office does suggest that there are some possibilities for some restructure in the industry, uh, some consolidation perhaps for the benefit of customers. Should that be the case, we would certainly be interested in ensuring and helping to improve the state of the industry in Estonia and if that meant expanding our operations across the country that would be very good indeed. I would highlight one problem though that we do have with any growth possibilities across Estonia at this point in time that's of course being the state of the current regulatory regime 
as it stands at the moment, unless you are the asset owner, it is not possible to earn profits from one water company to another water company. Hence, at this point in time, with the current structure of the regulatory regime, it certainly wouldn't be profitable for the company to be investing its time and its intellectual property into contracts that could only, where we would only be able to recover our costs. So in summary, yes, there are growth opportunities that are there. Yes, we can see benefits for the clients from working for the clients across Estonia, water clients across Estonia, from working with Talinovesi, uh, certainly in terms of service and cost. However, there, are, there is a significant constraint because of the current regulatory regime. We will, however, though, continue to try to influence across EVIL, the Estonian Water Association, and also the ministries to try and eliminate some of those deficiencies because we certainly believe there are opportunities for clients which should always be taken into account. Okay, then the second question. Do shareholders need to consider that there might be a decrease in dividends within the next five years when the company starts paying back long-term loans? If the dividend policy that has been in place so far does not change, how does the company plan to increase the yearly cash flow to a level that allows to pay back loans and continue to increase dividend payment by previous year's CPI? And the question will be answered by Rina Gai. Thank you, Marlies. I will just answer it very shortly. Considering the current market situation and our financial performance so far and uh, how we can see it uh, coming forward, we do not plan to change our balance sheet structure, which means that our aim is to keep our liabilities at the level of 55 to 65 percent from the assets. And today we cannot see any reasons to change our dividend policy going forward. Thank you. Um, I, I see one question in the chat window and I will read it out in a second, but before that I will uh, briefly go through how to activate your microphone in order to ask questions as well. Um, as you see in the presentation, you should uh, click on the microphone icon, choose connect my audio and click allow. The microphone is active when the icon is green. To adjust the volume, please once again click on the microphone icon, adjust microphone volume. Please mute your microphone while not speaking by clicking on the microphone button. In case of any technical issues with the microphone settings, please write your questions to chat window. We will read the questions out on your behalf. I will read Peter Prisalm's question. Has the management board already prepared a dividend proposal for the supervisory board? What level of dividend per share investors should expect if proposal has been prepared? then when it will be announced. Rina will take the question. Thank you, Peter, for the question. Um, answering this question, we haven't prepared a dividend proposal to the Supervisory Council yet, as we just had a Supervisory Council meeting yesterday. Uh, we are going to do it in the same, uh, approximately at the same time that we have always done in, in ESA. And uh, as we, we already mentioned, our aim is to keep our dividend, poli keep our dividend policy in order to uh, keep the dividends at least uh, real and, and the growth would be uh, similar to CPI. And uh, the announcement of dividends uh, for, for this year from last year's profit will be made approximately at the same time as it was done in 2013. Which I think is April. Yeah, it's, it's not April. before April. Yeah. Yeah. So, does anyone have questions? Somebody is again writing. Oh, there was one, one question before, sorry. Uh, from Roman. Uh, December 13, Supreme Court of Estonia cancelled government deci decision to ri uh, rise environmental taxes with higher pace than previously stated. Does and how much this judgment affects our Stalinovity? Thank you for this question. I'm Rina and I'm taking this question uh, myself. We looked into this, uh, uh, this law and it doesn't affect us as all uh, tariffs related to water, water extraction charges remain the same. 
Thank you. Another question from Peter Prieser. Does the company have a target level of uh, leverage? Example, a net debit EBITDA or net gearing of uh, other ratio? We just uh, mentioned before when I was answering uh, our, uh, our, uh, the question about how we are going to forward with uh, the dividends and our dividend policy as I, as I mentioned already, our aim is to keep our liabilities at the level of 55 to 65 percent of our total assets. Okay. Are there any more questions? Mm -hmm. At the moment, no questions. We will wait a second, but if there aren't any more questions, um, we would all like to thank you. And, and I will send you all uh, the presentation as well as the recording of the, of the webinar. Thank you very much and have a good day. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.